so at alliance girls mm. what are your how is your time there what do you t- okay yeah, so academically and otherwise do you now get into other things or is it just academic? yeah so first of all remember alliance is uh, let's say 400 kilometers away yeah again another travel mm. and i loved it and i love the independence because you know coming from a family of eight mm. everything was hand-me-downs mm. you know when you're the last girl so i love the fact that i started i owned my first towel my first <laughs> bed sheets mm. a suitcase yeah. i mean for me that was freedom that yours yes yeah. and and uh, on reflection mm. the, the the day i left from one i've never gone back home in terms of mm. now i'm going to stay again mm. to be going back to visit because mm. i went and flew completely mm-hmm. Um so it's um my dad is the one who took me and that time there was Akamba mm-hmm. buses <laughs> Ooh, it's mm. a long time mm. um so the first day you know reporting to school um that was i think end of january thereabouts mm. going to feb mm. and from there on i was on my own mm. so i traveled by myself as i said um those times it was pretty safe to mm. do so mm. Um, then we had you get in you're from Kitale and you meet this cliche of children from Nairobi mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you've never been to Nairobi except as <laughs> going Wild through person, yeah, yeah with your <laughs> mm-hmm. seven other siblings yeah. and your parents yeah and you know they know each other so I hardly knew I was the only one who went to a national school mm-hmm. in my year if I, if, if I remember oh, correctly and then you know you're meeting all these other ch- tribes you know there are tribes i never knew existed mm. like the subas mm. there was west pokot mm. i don't know in my head uh, those are places yeah those are places <laughs> you learn in geography but you've never actually met that yeah. person yeah. so i think the fact that we were quite mixed there mm. were guys from coast there mm. were guys from western you know mm-hmm. a very big um, intake of course based on the district focus system mm-hmm. And then uh, February comes and you're given this list mm-hmm. of boys mm. and you're told select a boy, a boy's name and send them a Valentine's letter and gift. Oh, wow. The boys were from across. Uh, we used Alliance to call it across. Boys. Yeah, Which, the yeah. Alliance High School. Mm. And here you are, you are, I was barely 12. Mm. I was 12 going to 13. You, you, you must have been like the youngest. Yeah, yeah. yes, I was the youngest. Mm. And you know you've been brought up knowing boys are bad. Mm. You know, <laughs> don't talk to boys; you'll get pregnant. <laughs> then here you're suddenly given a list, and you don't even know what Valentine's is. <laughs> so I think that was a major culture shock <laughs> for me. Um, but I liked the the fact that it had uh, mentorship. Yeah. So the form twos would be given a uh, form one two. Small sister. Yeah. Yes. So mm. it was like you say mother and daughter. Mm. And they would take you through the school rules. Mm. Uh, they'll help you adjust. So I was told what Valentine's was. Mm. I wrote to a guy who never replied anyway. Mm. Mm. So, um, but I enjoyed my stay in Alliance. Mm. I think it really molded me mm. in terms of the discipline, mm-hmm. in terms of um, also the fact that uh, they put in a lot of emphasis on extracurricular activities, mm. though I didn't take um, I don't remember taking any because at the back of my head I remember my mom telling me as she bids me by mm. uh now me joins the drama loosely yeah. translated let me hear uh, I don't want to hear that you've joined the drama club or yeah. what not you've not gone there to play adults. no you've not gone you go there to read yeah. yes and yeah. of course she read for you how she sacrificed yeah. I think we need to stop guilt tripping our children. But I find myself doing this, <laughs> <laughs> doing it with my children. Where you're telling them, yeah. I've worked so hard to yeah. take you to school. Yeah. You know, it's they need us to be born. They, so it's they, your duty. They need to live their life yeah. independent of us. Yes, and yeah. you need to stop guilt tripping. Yeah. So we had um, what I what I remember and I appreciate the school for mm. are the fact is the fact that we were allowed to mingle with boys, mm. and I think that brought. A healthy relationship with mm. the opposite sex, mm. because if I reflect on um, some of the behaviors and attitudes of uh, my my friends in campus who mm. came from strict, let's say, Catholic schools or whatnot, mm. 
there was this excitement that mm. hit them when they were in university that ooh, they are you know people of the opposite gender here mm. so for us that transition wasn't there because mm. you are made to do dances mm. joint dances so you go you're put in a hall and uh, they put music and you're supposed to dance mm. um mm -hmm. so some of us were wallflowers mm. <laughs> um others who knew each other would hook up we had joint movies mm. Uh, we had joint fellowships, mm. yeah, and mm. then we also had at that time visiting was every weekend. Yeah, so for those who had relatives around, you know, they would come, and mm. I like that, you know, some people would share because some of us mm. were never visited by our mm. parents mm. Uh, yeah, because of the fun. distance. Yeah. But we had siblings who'd now come and mm. visit. Mm. But just the fact that after you know visiting day, you'd find you know in the dormitories people would share whatever mm. stuff. Mm. You know, food. Food mm. was very important in high school, mm. I guess. Mm. So it it had a positive impact, mm. and um, even in terms of career, again, um, the choices were were there. Mm. There were many, so mm. we'd had. We'd, we'd have people coming over to talk to us about what they were doing. Mm. So I think that exposure was good. And um, going, this is like um, almost three decades later, right. we are still very, we have a close-knit relationship with people from, you know, the same year of high school. That's really nice. Yeah, and mm. I think it's just born from the fact that we, 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 we grew up as sisters. Mm. But the other day we were chatting in a, in our WhatsApp group and, mm. and there were people who had horrible experiences. Oh, in the school. same yeah, the, the same, same year, year mm. the same mm. the same kind ex of exposure. What, so I guess bullying? I think No, mm. I think the it's just the culture change right. maybe or mm. I don't know, but they're very personal mm. experiences. Mm. I wouldn't say there was bullying. Right. Uh, there wasn't bullying in mm. our time. Mm. But um, just going to say that you can have the same yeah. exposure yeah. but different exactly. uh, experiences. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, on, on on my side, mm. I am very proud to say I went to Alliance. Mm. As uh, people enjoy us with that, I went to Alliance uh, yeah. slogan yeah. because it molded me. Yeah. It, it 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 drilled in me discipline in yeah. academics mm. and even socialization that because we'd have outings to mm. the hospital, PCA mm. Kikuyu. Mm. Um, just to mm. interact with the patients, mm. I think on a Sunday mm. afternoon mm. we'd have Sunday school. Some people would go teach Sunday school. We had an old people's home. We'd go yeah. visit. So I think that kind of exposure really mm. helped us to appreciate the community around mm. us. Mm. Yeah, and mm. that one I, I appreciate mm. the school for. Mm. That's good. Mm. Um, and it's also building on to your uh, to your view of the world. Mm. You know, your larger perspective of life coming from you know the different areas mm. uh mombasa yeah. kitale then exactly now here yeah so um you finish your time there and um you how do you exit and begin okay. transitioning what, what 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 happens next yeah so i finish my time there so mm. during the um, half terms because we had half terms yeah i'd go visit my sister in uh, that time no my my sister was staying with me yeah, she was staying with my stepbrother. I have a stepbrother, I forgot to mention. Mm. <laughs> so we are nine, mm. technically. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that time he was staying in Dandora. And mm. no, for me, I, had me, I didn't have a social class mm -hmm. Mm. kind of mindset. So I remember coming back and saying the way I had a nice time. Yeah, I went yeah. to Nairobi, I went to say Dandora. Mm. And you know, this, you know, there was a pin drop silence like, so I'm wondering what's what is it? It's later when someone told me, okay, Dandora is not an affluent place, you know, the way others will say Kilimani, Karen, whatever. Mm. But you know, to me, it was it was my brother's place. Mm. It was a break. It was big, big Nairobi. Mm. Um, yeah. So I think that was one of the times where I started noticing that we had social strata. Yeah, yeah. and. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It's 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 something that um, I found strange because we were not brought up to see. Of course, growing up, we'd know that there'll be workers, or if you go shags, you'd see the conditions uh, people are living in. But I think it just didn't hit me that mm. that those would affect how we relate to each other. Mm. And I think that was the first time that I started noticing mm. that um, people are actually perceived from where they come from, what mm. they wear. Mm -hmm. um, which is sad, mm. really. Yeah. Mm. So, finished. Um, 
finished uh, high school and then went to stay with one of my sisters. She just had children. Mm. And I was like the house girl <laughs> at that time. And I remember she has OCD. Oh my goodness. Mm. OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. Mm. And I'm the total opposite. Mm. So she'd want, those times we didn't have diapers, mm. it was napkins. Napkins, yeah. So she'd want the napkins hung in a certain way. And you know, napkins are almost square, but yeah. they are actually rectangles. Yeah. So you have to be very keen to know which is the longer side. <laughs> and she had this particular, uh, I didn't last long. I said, I can't do this. <laughs> so I wrote to my mom and I remember writing to her, because those days we used to write letters. Mm. And it was also the first time I noticed that life in Nairobi was about hustling. Because mm. growing up in Kitale, there's food. Right. Even if you're poor, there's food, you can't starve. Mm. So Ugali was in plenty. You cook extra expecting many yes. people yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and then in nairobi in my sister's house she was you know she'd count every head and then a portion a certain uh, a little cup portion. of flour yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I and i think she still reminds me to date i wrote to my mom and i said you know this house people are starving <laughs> like she has to pima the ugali and then even slice it first so it goes to the table and it's already sliced. That's another culture shock that I got coming to Nairobi because I'm like, how how do you? But she was staying with many people, yeah. including myself. Yeah. She had relatives from her husband's side and 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 those guys, and I guess um, that needed to happen. That needed to happen, yeah. but I wasn't so happy about it. Yeah. Um, so, but I mostly moved because of um, the napkin issue. <laughs> And I went to stay with, <laughs> went to stay uh, with my second, our second-born sister. Yeah.